Today we're going to take a look at joining lobbies. In the last video, we created the lobbies. Now it's time to get other players with us. So let's get started. So in the main menu, what we want to do is we want to have a join screen. So we want that when a player clicks the join button, it actually switches screen. So it's going to set this one to inactive and set this one to active. And this screen lets the player enter the code and then he can click the join button and we're going to um, put him in the same lobby if the code is valid. So that's what we're going to do. So for that, the first thing to do is um, to go back in our menu here, in our main menu controller, and uh, make sure that when we press the join button, we can switch screens. So let's go into Rider. So here we're going to go in the main menu controller and we're going to put here the two screens that we need to be able to manipulate. So um, serialize field, private, game object, um, let's call the first one main screen and then the join screen. Uh, we're going to put on the join button, that's where we want to actually join it. Right now we just do join, but we're going to uh, remove that in fact, we don't need that. We're going to do main uh, screen dot set active to uh, false because we want to hide that one and we're going to say join screen oh, join screen dot set active to true so that should switch the screen let's just test that real quick so we're going to drag the uh, main menu in the main screen and the join screen in the join screen so let's play this so if i quit, click join it switch screen so perfect uh, now what we need to do is when we see this screen now it needs to uh the player needs to enter a code and when he press join we actually read that code so uh, let's put it back and go into writer okay so let's go up here and add a new button so we're gonna add the the submit code button um, and here we're going to have to do that. But uh, first, let's change uh, the way we do our listener. Because the way it's done right now, on start it listens, but then it never gets um, clean. And this is just something that is a good practice to put it on, on enable and on disable. Um, so we add the listener and on disable, we remove the listener. There we go. We're going to do it like that. So for that, we just want the submit code here and we need a method. So let's create here a private void on submit code clicked. Sorry. Okay. So when this is clicked, we want to actually call this. So let's go. So let's do this and we make sure to remove it. So remove listener. Here it is. So, okay, cool. Now, once the, once the person clicked the uh, button, we want to actually get the text. So let's go here, serialize uh, field again, private text mesh pro GUI. So that import the TMP pro here. Make sure you have that. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, here and uh, we can say code text. Okay, cool. So now when the person presses the uh, submit, we want to read the code. So here we're going to say, string code equal that text and just for now we're gonna go debug oh boy debug dot log uh, code so that way we know that we're reading the code properly okay so now we can go back in unity and check that in the join screen that's what we want we want to put some reference in here so uh for the code text we're gonna drag this text here uh inside the text area and for the submit code button we're gonna go here now that it's dragged, we should be able to see appear here the code that we uh, enter. So let's uh, test that, join, test, and do join, and you see here, test. So that works perfectly. Um, now, there's this little thing that you're gonna see with TextMesh Pro that is a little bit hard to work with. Um, I'm gonna give you my personal workaround, but actually when you read the text uh, attribute on the, uh, on the text here, 
it actually has an hidden character, an end of line character. And that character is kind of hard to remove. And if you pass it as is to um, uh, join the join lobby, it's going to say that it's not the same code because it has that character at the end. And um, since we don't want that, we're going to have to remove it in the code before sending it. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to actually join the lobby. All right. So let's go back into writer. Okay. So here, um, as I said, the code, we need to remove the last character. So we're going to do code that substring. Uh, you start at zero and the length is actually code that length minus one because we just want to remove one character from the end. So this is the code we're actually going to send to um, the lobby service because then it's going to it's supposed to match a code that we're uh, the host uh, has give it, has given you. Okay, so now uh, we're going to go ahead and create a method in the game lobby manager. Uh, to actually uh, join a lobby and we're going to pass him uh, the code. Okay, so let's generate that function here. We're going to create it and here we go. That's where uh, we're actually going to start um, asking our lobby manager to join the lobby. So for us, if you uh, look up here, it's going to be similar uh, to the, um, let me move that up, to the create lobby, but uh, we don't have to create the lobby, we just have to join it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do, um, uh, we're going to have to have the same dictionary of data because uh, we want to send the data of the current player, but it's not the host. Join player. This is going to be his gamer tag. What we do is bool succeeded equals a wait lobby manager dot instance dot and then we want a new method join lobby where we pass the code that we receive and the player data so uh, that's it and then we're gonna return succeed so in fact this is gonna be a bool here and we can already put it as we know it's gonna be an async function because uh, it's uh, the same way uh, since at the end we're calling the lobby services then this all needs to be async so let's go async task bool like this okay because we already know that and then this okay so now let's go and do the join lobby here let's generate it so it's a public async task bool we have a uh, task uh, bool we have the join lobby and everything and this is where we're going to put the code to join the lobby so in the join lobby the method in the uh, unity game services love its lobby service dot instance dot join lobby by code async that's the one we actually want to get so this take a lobby code which we already have and some join lobby by code options so for the lobby code we're just going to straight up as the code and for the join lobby by code action we're going to have to actually create that so join lobby by code option so let's say options equals new join code by lobby options um Actually, the only option we currently have is uh, uh, the player. So we're going to go and create the player. Player player um, equals new player. And then we want to give it the ID, which is the um, uh, player ID right here. The connection is still null because we don't have anything. And then uh, for the data, uh, we already have our serialized player data option, which we can pass the player data in. So that's going to be um, our player. So now we can do options that player equals player. So that information is uh, what's going to be available to the other player in the lobby so the other player in the lobby is going to be able to read this so they're going to know your gamer tag and stuff like that so that they can update their own ui on their side so we're going to pass in the options okay so what does it give us back it gave us a lobby so what we want to do is we have already done here sorry for that i'll close that um, we already have here a lobby that uh, is the same that when we create a lobby we just uh set it so um, on our side we're going to want to do the same thing because that variable on this side is going to be um, empty but now we're going to populate it so lobby equals a wait uh, for uh, this instance so that's uh, the 
basic basic of actually creating the lobby uh, but we'll go a little bit further because as we uh, did up there we want to kind of at least catch any exceptions so uh, that we um we can return false like if the lobby was not created so let's go here and do the same thing try uh, the change try and then catch and then we're just going to put that here here uh, let's put it like this so we're going to try to create the, the to join the lobby if it didn't then we return false if it did uh actually create the lobby then uh what we want to do is um we don't actually need the art beat in this uh, case like i said in the previous video um only the hosts need to do the art beat but you still need to subscribe um for the lobby updates so we're gonna start here to the coroutine coroutine uh, uh get lobby uh, wop, 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 uh, refresh lobby coroutine sorry refresh lobby coroutine and then this one's the lobby id so in fact it's going to be the same 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 line as the create so we can go right here and we're going to copy it because we want to keep a reference to it too so it's going to be the same line you can copy paste this here um, so every second it's going to refresh the lobby and if everything was a good we can return true so this is the basic things that you want for joining a lobby. Now we're going to go back to the uh, game manager here. Everything is fine. We're returning if it succeed. And then in a main menu manager, um, we're just going to have to turn this one also into an async. And then we're going to put a bool uh, succeeded equals a wait because we want to wait this and then uh there you go and what we want to do is we want to do the same thing here if it succeeded then we move to oops, uh, we move to the lobby scene okay well let's you know what i'm just going to reformat the whole code here um code uh, reformat code that did not help. So let me just, there was a little character, a weird character here. So we're just gonna, here we go. Okay, so if everything worked, we just go to the lobby. Okay, so let's go into uh, uh, Unity and test that. Uh, we're gonna switch uh, to the init scene. So um, in here, we're going to go in the build settings. Uh, we're going to make sure that all your scene are here. So the init, the main menu, the loading and the lobby. We're going to go in player settings. Uh, in here in resolution, uh, I'll put Windows uh, 860. That's so you guys can see it um, on the video. And then uh, we're going to do a build, in fact. So you can do a build here. It shouldn't take too long. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch both games side by side. And what we should see is if I host in one and I join in one, I get um, in the lobby scene with the same code. So, okay, so let's go. We'll put this one like this and we'll kind of uh, just, oops, like put it somewhere around here so that we have it and I'm gonna launch another version of the game right here so in this one i'm going to host so this is a lobby code so if i enter that lobby code into this game i should be able to join so let's look at this so there you go and here we go since i got the code right i am in the same lobby and there it is for joining lobbies in the next video, we're going to take a look at actually spawning the players that are joining or leaving the lobby. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and click on the bell. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.